Right, hey guys, how are we doing? Back another video from uh, Totally Not Mark. We checked out the Colossal Review for Attack on Titan. I thought it was really cool to check that out. Get a manga-only perspective. Nice little refresh on the on the series, the story, seeing things that were, were missed out. Um, this is covering the final chapter. This is just the final chapter review of Attack on Titan. And this is purely going to be manga-only perspective because of the time this came out. And uh, I think that's going to be really, really interesting because the majority of people that watch the anime really, really liked the, the ending. But I remember when this came out, there was a lot of, a lot of uproar, a lot of uh, negativity towards how it ended. But uh, So I want to see the manga-only perspective on this. Like, what actually, what, what went wrong with the manga? It is exceptionally difficult to make a video on a divisive subject when it is so fresh. For me as a content creator, I know that there's absolutely no way on earth this video will be unanimously enjoyed. Mm. Regardless of what I say, <laughs> there will be someone who takes issue with it. That's oh, yeah. true of any kind of review, but with something so fresh, in this case Attack on Titan's ending, emotions are still very high and people are incredibly vocal, unwilling to let go of those initial feelings to approach the subject with nuance. This is both both understandable and a little frustrating. Frustrating because it actually masks what the general consensus is. Angry people are both loud and relentless and oh, it can often yeah. take many months for things to quiet down and for the larger picture to emerge. One of the most recent examples of this is the video game The Last of Us 2. Prior to launch, spotty leaks lacking the greater context of the story emerged, leading to an early feeling of anger from certain parts of the gaming community. The game launched and those people got louder and louder and if you were to engage with discussion around that game within the first few weeks or simply consumed nothing but hyperbolic or disingenuous memes you might get the impression that the game was an irredeemable failure from start to finish of course you look at things nowadays with the unsavory parts of the fandom largely ignored and the situation's a lot more nuanced than that which might have been apparent it has broken sales records garnered universal critical praise and continued to win countless awards many of which were voted on by fans gamers vocally praised it across social media and while while there are absolutely those with incredibly strong negative opinions concerning it, of which they are entirely valid in feeling, the general response to the game is so much more balanced and nuanced nowadays. Yeah, like, the, if people hate it from the get-go and they get very, very loud with it, they keep getting loud until people realize they were being loud for a reason. <laughs> um, yeah. General consensus for the anime ending was straight away like, yeah, brilliant. Like everyone was just loving it, absolutely class. I was, I was, I, thank you, manga onis. You made me expect like an absolute rubbish ending, cause you were so goddamn loud. But thankfully, you know, I, I, I really enjoyed. Now, that might sound like a somewhat strange tangent, but really, it's a roundabout way of me trying to say the intensely negative reactions to Attack on Titan's ending that are circulating the internet right now may not necessarily reflect how the greater population feels as a whole. Or it could be like Game of Thrones, where everyone under the sun despises the ending and the whole thing is entirely soured. <laughs> I still refuse to watch the ending. Wait a minute, is this part, from, is this part of it? Oh my queen. Nothing will change that. We'll see, I guess. But as a... Oh, you see, I, I don't know. I, I still don't know how it ends. I, I refuse. I refuse. Please don't spoil it. It currently stands. Attack on Titan's ending is one of immense magnitude. It is dense, nuanced, symbolic. It is one with tremendous thematic impact and filled to the brim with tragic uncertainty. And yet, it is likewise clumsy, rushed, and borderline juvenile at times. Oh, wow. You may sit either side of the fence or you may be somewhere in the middle, but either way, I hope you'll take the time to consider my perspective as I will yours. And Maybe together we'll gain a greater understanding of what this conclusion, 11 years in the making, truly offers. This is Attack on Titan's highly controversial final chapter, Toward the Tree on that Aww. Hill. For dozens upon dozens of chapters, readers of Attack on Titan have been privy to a version of Eren Yeager that spawned from years of suffering. A child forged in tragedy who began to sink deeper and deeper into darkness, longing for freedom, convinced of the world's irredeemable nature. He it was like, let's kill all the Titans. Then it was, let's just kill 
everyone. It became a character that readers understood wholeheartedly, deeply empathized with, but ultimately and very reasonably considered to be in the wrong. Standing strong with the likes of Armin and his cohorts, the notion that violence begets more violence has been a long-standing mantra for readers of this franchise. Mm -hmm. This final chapter, however, recontextualizes everything we've ever seen, while simultaneously maintaining the very high tragedy we all fell in love with in the first place. In a lengthy conversation between Aaron and Armin, we come to understand the truth of Aaron Jaeger's tragedy, one of immeasurable weight and heartbreak. We come to learn that upon touching Historia's hand at the award ceremony at the end of season three, Aaron gained total omniscience, the power to see everything that is, was, and will, will be. be. He gained yeah, a full yeah, yeah. understanding of the world's fate, along with Emir's memories and emotions, and all that her powers entail. And with that came a <laughs> horrific curse. Excuse he me. saw the endless possibilities, the inevitable outcomes, and after exploring each and every path he came to understand that there was but one singular one path do, yeah. he must keep pushing towards if he were to ever achieve his goal for those of you who are intimately familiar with the marvel cinematic universe this shouldn't be a new concept mm. in avengers infinity war oh yeah but that's, that's strange it's all like mm. Is one. Or Doctor Strange looks into the future at the millions of possible outcomes in their predicament with Thanos and discovers that there's a singular outcome in which they prevail. This is fundamentally the same concept in Attack on Titan, though steeped in its unrelentingly oppressive world. While we as readers had previously come to believe Eren's unjust actions were the result of his internal logic twisted by his harrowed surroundings, this revelation recontextualizes Eren's motives, instead spitting a tale of a man cursed with knowledge, forced to ostracize himself and turn against everyone he ever loved or cared about in the pursuit of freedom. Freedom for his friends and freedom for his people. Perhaps the most tragic action unveiled here is the understanding that Eren caused the death of his own mother. That was something. Like, that was absolutely something. It's like, I was gonna save her, but then I saw Bertolt, and I was like, ah, Bertolt needs to live. It's like, what? In chapter 96 of the manga, we see that the Titan Dina encroaches upon Bertolt, and yet she walks straight past him. 40 chapters later, we come to understand that it was Eren who saved Bertolt's life here Yo. in this instance. Honestly, it's a concept that's hard to comprehend, and these types of time manipulation stories are never easy, unfortunately, but I'll do my best to explain it to the best of my understanding, and hopefully it's largely correct. I think that the, the way that the anime was able to, like, pace it and add music and more emotion and, and, and you know, with this, it's like, it's just still image. I think maybe with such a concept, it must be it must have been very, very difficult to get across with just, you know, still images like this. Like the paths and everything. It's it's such a complex little like Within the paths, all events occur go. on a fixed timeline and everything happens in the same instant. Mm. This is why Aaron can still affect things that have already happened, since he is perceiving everything all at the same, same time. time yeah. Likewise, in terms of the predetermined fates mentioned in this chapter, Aaron's mother will always die and Bertholdt will always, always die. Live. And there's well, no way to change later, that. Yeah. This is evident in chapter 131, <laughs> where although Aaron saves the young boy Ramsey from being murdered by street thugs he acknowledges the pointlessness of his actions yeah. as the boy will still ultimately die later via the rumbling what's important to understand however is that things can be delayed and shifted around or manipulated to an extent this is seen in Aaron's manipulation of Grisha to take the founding titan for Hell, example which was so freaking cool example what's tragic in this reveal here however is that the way in which Aaron's mother died had to be this way for it to serve as Aaron's motivator. Yeah. And Berthold's death as a result had to be prolonged for this part of the story to play out in a way that leads to the ideal outcome Aaron is pushing towards. That outcome being his death at the hands of okay. a very yeah. special person. Right. All alone, Aaron could do nothing but ensure the wheels of fate kept turning to the exact specification required to hit the outcome of freedom. And so, to put it as simply as possible, Aaron is looking down at a great puzzle capable of forming many pictures, but only one specific combination of those puzzle pieces will produce the picture Aaron is seeking. Yeah, and that picture is... Freedom. Aaron continues to issue his reasoning at Armin, explaining the crux of his dilemma. Ymir's inescapable connection to King Fritz, abused from her very birth, Ymir's life has been one of never-ending ill-treatment and exploitation. But she loved him. She loved him. Not once has she experienced normality, and in spite of the horrific acts enacted on her by the king, her understanding of love never wavered. Her resolve, worn away and beaten down, 
Ymir is left incapable of fathoming a world where she does not obey her abuser. And so she continues to maintain the existence of Titans in the world, prolonging the curse of her people. Which means for this tragic cycle to end, for these chains of fate to ultimately break, Eren must follow along on the singular path he witnessed that leads to salvation. The key to the lock on that chain is none other than Mikasa. Ymir, so desperate to be released from the agony of her love, found a sort of indirect kinship in Mikasa. Throughout this story, Mikasa's love for Eren has been so strong to the point that she actively values him over everything else, even her own life, as Armin so succinctly pointed out. Isayama even goes as far as to create a direct parallel with King Fritz saying to Ymir in an earlier chapter, Ymir, my, my slave, slave, and Eren repeating to Mikasa in their confrontation, you're a slave, Mikasa. Both shackled slaves to love, Emir's choice in Mikasa is both understandable and pivotal in the events that follow. As Emir watches Mikasa's actions over the course of the narrative, her understanding of their shared perspective on love grows stronger, and in those final moments, as Mikasa casts aside her love for Eren to do the right thing in putting him to death, behind her stands none other than Damn, Emir. Yeah, yeah, a smile watching, on her yeah. face as she realizes that if Mikasa could shed her love for the greater good, and then so she. perhaps she could too. Yeah, it's mad. I did quite like that little touch in the anime as well. It's such a shame that this doesn't like have like you know the anime perspective, but I did like that she was in the background and it did, it did make sense. Like it was really nice. Like so she can break that shackle that she has and overcome it and fight it. Like she, <laughs> Mia's just like yes, because is the the answer and uh, it's it's weird. Ah, oh. and that is precisely what she does: eradicating the Titans and setting the Eldians free. And when relayed like this, I find that Attack on Titan's resolution is remarkably powerful, building upon years of strong thematic character writing all coming to a head, wrapping up in exceptionally tragic lore. Unfortunately, the clarity of this narrative, both in its dialogue, quality, and presentation of events, is where this final chapter falls flat, and it's where I imagine a great deal of the online animosity stems from. Okay. Lord, I'm confused. Is this a happy ending or a sad ending? It's an ending. That's enough. And that's exactly what I thought, though, with the anime. Like, it's... It... It's an ending. <laughs> Despite the chapter's rather lengthy 50 pages, only 20 of those are dedicated to the content I've outlined thus far, with the remainder delegated to short snippets of character moments and details of the finale's aftermath. While those remaining 30 pages are, to me, the strongest parts of the chapter, it's those initial 20 that serve as the resolution to Eren's character arc and the greater conflict that the series has hinged on since its inception. For such important subjects to be crammed into such a short amount of time is incredibly disconcerting and where I believe the biggest flaws of this ending stem from. When dealing with complex subjects, it's vital to speak plainly and to present your views with plot threads that can be tied together naturally while reading. That Did the manga make it look like Armin and Aram are gonna kiss? Because <laughs> the, the anime really kind of made it look like they were gonna kiss, man. <laughs> like, it was so... It was a bit awkward, but then it was a hug, and it's like, oh, I watched, there was some really good TikToks of that. That's not to say media can't be challenging, thought-provoking, or require multiple viewings to truly grasp, but the emotional impact of a piece of media is greatly diminished if the majority of your audience is focused on the logistics behind your story's mechanics, then living the emotions of the scene along with the characters. And so, contained with only 20 pages, much of the expository dialogue here feels remarkably brief and undercooked. And as a result, Armin's reactions begin to feel the same way. The structure largely features Armin relaying the basics of what's happening, with Eren dropping large plot bombs and not really elaborating on them further. Hmm. It's important to give audiences time to breathe, take in major plot points and assess them in the greater context of the story, but that's not what happens here. Readers have barely had a chance to ingest the reveal of Ymir's Stockholm Syndrome before Eren reveals Mikas' importance one page later, there's a single page to breathe before the exceedingly complex concept of time is dropped on us which is then followed up by the reveal regarding Aaron's mother interesting like because it i i felt it was quite quick in the way that um Aaron was explaining everything but i think it was just the build-up and the emotion and everything like that and then the way that um i mean just like cut him off and just like look 
and it's just like mm. a second later and characters are having big emotional outbursts and none of that works because justifiably readers cannot be invested in the emotion of a scene if they're still busy processing the prior points Aaron has this moment of total fragility as he breaks on the subject of Mikasa heartbroken over his fate to never be with her he wants to feel his presence is still in the world long after he's gone particularly in Mikasa's mind the person who's been his number one since the story's beginnings the concept behind this scene is largely not an issue but the way it's placed in this chapter and given no surrounding context is with no real lead in or lead out to bring readers back around to this version of Eren the outburst feels quite silly and juvenile when its intent is to be heartbreaking it's the same issue that plagues many of Armin's reactions here particularly the famous line where he thanks Eren for becoming a mass murderer for the sake of their future mm. and okay while I do feel that in general the way that that line is phrased is quite bad the intent behind it is powerful having come to understand the horrific sacrifices made Armin once driven by dialogue over violence finally understands the truth of Eren's actions and thanks him for enduring his cursed destiny it's a reconciliation between two friends that have drifted apart but it just doesn't land and it should with neither of them addressing the residual faults in each other, it all feels a bit hollow and, understandably, you have readers asking why A, B and C were never addressed. Now, I'm not going to sit here and try to dictate to you all how I feel the chapter should have been written point by point. I yeah, mean, yeah, I yeah, think Isayama's proven his competency over the past 11 years, and suggesting that I could do better would be immensely disrespectful. But I don't think it'd be particularly unfair to I was say, but uh, here we go. <laughs> say that this chapter could have benefited from being split into two 40 to 50 pages dedicated to the explanation of events. A version that features a nuanced buildup of these complex emotions changing as Aaron transparently elaborates on his torturous time throughout the series. A version that allows digestion time and breathing room and allows these morally complex themes to be explored in ways that best fit the characters involved. Those initial 20 pages are exclusively where my major issues with this ending lie and the remainder, at least to me, are almost perfect, containing the most significant emotional payoffs of the series, fulfilling themes in the making for all these years. Returning to their human forms, the victims of these previous chapters regain their memories, coming to understand Eren's intentions in the same way readers just witnessed Armin doing. It's a powerful moment, particularly with the likes of Annie and Reiner finally reuniting with their families, Aww. this time with a hug and a lot less tragedy. Heck, Falco and Gabby's reunion is so powerful that she straight up suplexes him with no remorse. Alas, however, the surface level happiness is underpinned with pain and sorrow, and that's a running theme for this ending. Against the background of these Aww. happy reunions is a farewell as Armin and Mikasa mourn the loss of Eren and discuss the best place to honor his memory far away from those who'd interfere with a proper send-off. Likewise, in what is perhaps the most emotionally resonant moment in this final chapter, Levi, Connie, and Jean reflect on the symbolic visions of their lost comrades, allowing themselves one last farewell. Dozens upon dozens of lost lives all leading to this outcome and Levi left permanently scarred, he wistfully utters, I guess this is the result of all of your devoted hearts. Yeah. The mantra of the Survey Corps issued one last time against the backdrop of human <sighs> sacrifice. It's one of the most beautifully bittersweet moments of this series, and I can't help but feel emotional just relaying it to you all right now. One last synchronized fist to the heart as the fallen heroes of his story vanish into the mist of the aftermath, leaving behind a shadow of the wings of freedom and it's that nice. sense of freedom that resonates throughout the remaining pages of the story whether the marleyans truly trust that the titan threat is gone is left ambiguous and ultimately that's the point they're allowed to live and for the first time they're given a chance at life for many fans the reveal that the identity of historia's child's father was a red herring has been a source of major disappointment and while i can't understand that to an extent i think the purpose of that child has been sorely misunderstood for me turning the page to reveal a three-year time skip against the backdrop of an eldian child celebrating her third birthday in total normality was such a thematically powerful reveal that any misgivings of being misled simply vanished i think no, that is nice it shows that like you know there was a payoff there was freedom there's happiness after the fact a sign of fearless normality in a world like a i don't think we did. I, I don't remember if we saw that in the anime though like i think we just saw the birth 
but Attack on Titan sends you powerful. Because there, there, the time, there was a time skip, and we saw them on the boat on the way to talk, and they were talking about being surprised about not being like blown out of the water. But uh... message to readers about the success of Aaron's actions, and page by page, the remaining panels dictate the state of the world three years after the climactic battle, and this is where the nuances of the story most clearly come to light. After all the struggles, There's still war. <laughs> Aaron went through all the pain, the suffering, and the death. War continues to rumble across the land. So what was Aaron really fighting for? It's here that I think the obvious parallels to Watchmen's Dr. Manhattan are important to consider. Much like Aaron, Dr. Manhattan has an omniscient sense of time and one of his most famous quotes is, I can change almost anything, but I can't change human nature. And I think that notion is incredibly pertinent to Aaron's actions within the story. War has always and will always be a thing. Human nature's sense of tribalism is deeply ingrained and that's not going away anytime soon. But that was never Aaron's goal. He was never trying to tie a neat bow on the world's issues and vanish into the sunset as the sole savior of the world. Aaron's primary concern has always been about freedom and that's precisely what he provided for his people. The Eldians, the people of paradise. So that's them on the right okay so this was still they're on a level playing field with the remainder of the world now after centuries of being perceived as monsters they're beginning to be seen as people the titans once a horrifying tool for the apocalypse used to frighten the other nations are now gone, gone. for good yeah, yeah. these people are free from the recurring fate of suffering and now stand on equal footing using their traumatic story to underpin the campaign for peace in the world Mass genocide happened, it's a thing and it will need to be acknowledged and while armies are built by those in fear of retaliation, there now exists a worldwide curiosity about the people of paradise's message of peace, a message of freedom. And that's precisely what makes the final pages of this story so powerful. As Mikasa sits by Eren's grave, longing to see him again, a bird appears. Oh, I love this moment. Looking at her scarf. There's the, do you know what, though? They did it so well. Like the, the music hit and everything. It was like, ah, oh, it was so good. And wrapping it over her shoulder. Oh. Throughout the series, the wings of a bird have been a symbol for freedom, mm -hmm. the hope for all mankind. And for Eren to appear symbolically in this way and harken back to the comfort he provides Mikasa and now all of mankind, that is one heck of a powerfully resonant final image wow. to leave okay, cool. the series on. Taking all of that into consideration, unfortunately, thematic consistency can only take quality so far when the presentation of these aspects is such a mixed bag and sadly that remains the chapter's biggest flaw it's something i think is worth thinking about though it's easier to make fun of something than to try and understand it and i think people in time as the conversation online becomes more honest we may all arrive at similar conclusions that attack on titan's ending isn't Game of Thrones. It isn't throwing away years of transparent character arcs, ignoring unfinished plot threads, and bending over backwards to justify its conclusions. The final chapter is obtuse, underbaked, and rushed, but what it isn't is a betrayal of its legacy. A legacy that reminds us that the ashes of destruction can stand for more than sorrow. They can mark the birthplace of a new era, one of reflection and new opportunity. Does the thing with the kid and the dog and the tree happen in the manga come on through all the suffering comes eventual relief and the potential for change it's a message that resonates in many aspects of life both within the pages of this manga and the real world and while i so wish that this ending had more room to breathe to say what it wanted to say with perfect clarity i can't say it was a failure and with all said and done i still love attack on titan Oh, <sighs> thanks for watching guys. Last week's video was one of the mm, most challenging projects I've ever attempted in the history of my channel and I'd like- but It was really good though, it was a very, very good video. To once again extend a special thank you to all of my Patreon supporters for their unwavering support and specifically to Anime AJ for writing this week's video so that I could sleep this week. In Aww. addition to that, one name I neglected to shout out last week was a fantastic channel by the name of Literal Maverick. His analysis of the political controversy surrounding the series proved to be invaluable when creating <laughs> that particular section in my previous video and he's a great guy so please check out his channel but now that i've completed attack on titan in the truest sense of the word it's time for my next big adventure um, we next week i'm diving headfirst into one of the most beloved and troubled series in japan next week i'm starting the legendary hunter hunter hey and those reviews are great those reviews were boss i, I remember watching them that was really good the review series. But yeah, wow, that's interesting. So...
was the because it's not important it's just symbolic of like history repeating itself like hence why they show that the war is there and everything but that is an interesting point Aaron still gave what them what he wanted the whole time freedom they are recognized as people now and yeah i yeah cool and the whole wings on the you know the the, the stuff that they wear symbolic of the, the i never really clocked onto that so that's cool as well but interesting like i think the anime just took its time in pacing it maybe i'm glad i did anime only but that was that was cool to see mark's uh you know views on the the manga ending um but yeah thank you to my patrons if you want to have your name at the uh, end of every video i upload link in the description to the patreon page one dollar a month is all i have sports channels greatly appreciate thank you guys for that and thank you all for watching what do you guys think of that what do you guys think of this click like subscribe if you haven't really leave comments down below let me know that i should watch and discuss in future videos i'll see you guys oh you guys Next time.